Kanye with you. Who yeah. was you in camp with out there recently? And Cali? Yeah, and you uh, brought him out. I was Castano's spawn partner for his last yeah, fight. Damn. Yeah. yeah. How you Castano's spawn? Man, ain't you too small? Man, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know how it happened, but I was in Terrell Goucher's uh, training camp when he was getting ready for, uh, what's the dude's name? Tazu. Um, Tazu. And um, he just, he, he asked me, did I want to come to camp? But at first, I'm like, no, nah, I want to go to All Star Weekend because it, it came to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So PJ was like, man, man, we gone, we out of here. You feel me? You need to go get some more experience and get some work out here in LA. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I go out there, and um, you know, I, we I'm training with Terrell. I'm going to Manny's gym, and Virgil was there. So I end up getting, I end up sparring with Virgil, uh, Angel, uh, Ruiz. Um, I sparred Alexis Rocha the first day. How much were you weighing in that week? Um, I can't even think. I was in my fifties. Okay. I was in my fifties, but um, but Virgil had to be way heavier than fifty. No, he was big. No, he was big yeah. when I sparred him. But um, during during that time, I ended up getting a fight date. I ended up getting a fight date, and uh, that's how that's how uh, I really ended up really having to spar Virgil and Angel and stuff like that. You feel me? So I learned a lot sparring them too, because they both fight one forty seven. Mm -hmm. And my first time sparring Angel, I was like, man, this dude big. You know what I'm saying? He a big southpaw. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just thinking he's just a big 47. Then I spar Virgil. I'm like, man, nah, man. This <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, man, these dudes big. So that's when I, when that's when I had to learn. I was like, okay, this this pros is a little different. Cause I fought 52 in the amateurs. And oh wow. I'm, and I'm I was big, bigger than some of the 52s I was fighting. So you know what I'm saying? But. That's Wait, what, your entire amateur career was 52? No, because you uh, fought Ryan. No, no, no. I mean, obviously not. Champ. So, I mean, so how many years were you at 52? Kid. I went to 52, 2018. Oh, wow. Yeah. So about four years? Yeah. Not three? Because you turned I did, pro. I did, I did 132. Because remember, they took they took his weight class Yeah. Out. So I did 132 for 2016 and 17. And, but, and to be honest, 2016, after I fought Ryan, I moved up to 141. But when you when Team USA called me in to replace to take Ryan's place, I had to go back down to 132. So then, I, since since my weight was already down there, I went to Elite Nationals at 132 when I was really at 141. So after after my first year on Team USA, which was 2017, I went to 40, 141. I went back up to 141. Did that for one year, and during that year, I went up I went up to 152. So from 2018. From the second half of 2018 to now, I fought, well, to the Olympics, I fought 152. Mm. So when did you realize I'm not even a welterweight? Because Earl fought at 52 and he been a welterweight ever since 2012. Well, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say I'm not a welterweight, but it, I feel like it, I feel like it was a smarter move for me to go down 140 and develop, get some more experience and develop into my body more, get stronger, get, get a little, get a little more bigger. Then go for, go then go to forty seven. Was that a decision that you made with the team? Yeah, I mean it was a decision we made <laughs> right after I sparred virtual. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling you, cause uh, cause what happened was um, Virgil sparring partner. I wasn't even meant to spar Virgil. How I was many just, fights you had when you sparred Virgil? Two, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, there was two because it was right after my second fight. So uh, Virgil one week Virgil sparring partner didn't show up for some reason and um. Manny was like, you do want to get some rounds in with Virgil? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? i get some work. So that first round, you know, he 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 fight aggressive already. and But he he physically strong and he could punch. So first round, you know, I'm trying to outbox him, da-da-da and stuff. You know, he putting the pressure on me. And even the punches I was blocking, like, I'm feeling them joints. You feel me? I'm like, man, this motherfucker can punch. <laughs> you feel me? So I come back to the corner. He put the pressure on me from the jump though like mm -hmm. he jumped on me you know what i'm saying so after that first round come back to the corner the pj like man how you feel i'm like man this dude punch it <laughs> pj like yeah man that's that he was like that's that 47. i'm like man he don't weigh no 47 right now you know what i'm saying but i'm like but uh pj like yeah but that's 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 his size like he get down to 47 you know what i'm saying so i'm like man dang <laughs> so uh i think i did like six rounds with him that day but what? Yeah, I did like I did like six rounds with him. You know what I'm saying? But um, so you find you found a way to not be hit because that, that's a, I mean if you saying I had to learn. See, I had to learn how to deal. I had to learn how to weather the storm because PJ was telling me he was like, man, the reason why he getting you on the ropes 
and you moving so much because you allow him to do that so he was like he was teaching me how to i had to learn how to fight in the clinch sparring virgil like i had to figure i had to really figure pj showed me what to do but i had to literally spar virgil for me to learn for myself like okay this is what i gotta do pj guided me through that whole time so in the clinch me planting my feet holding my ground i had to learn how to do that fight in virgil you know what i'm saying and that was that was a big learning experience for me sparring with virgil so you know big shout out to him sam how tall are you 511. Mm, you taller than bradley you're gonna make a great welterweight now i was just asking and about the decision making because we hear like uh barrios boots. well i was gonna say boots i was gonna bring up the boots example right he had 47 but they said like he really wasn't a welterweight but they chose to like literally build him into, in, a, welterweight. into a welterweight he fought 41 in the amateurs too yeah mm -hmm. so that's that, what i'm saying his father decided but you rather know, Boots than, a big dude though but that's what i'm saying his father decided rather than make you suck down to fight at 40 we gonna just let you be and fight at 47 and build you up yeah. and now everybody like yo boots a big ass welterweight he knocking out super middleweights right so his father so, yeah I was so you curious. doing the same thing as basically y'all made a decision to pick a division and build into that division versus going wherever you naturally yeah. Uh, right. Weighing that, yeah, because right. it ain't like it was super hard for for him to like. He was making forty seven. Like, no, I could see he made forty four and forty five. You, you know what I'm saying? So then he, he hit me with the. But I don't. Man, he hit me with the. I feel good at forty seven. Not really cutting. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's easy. But I do believe though, like of my beginning stage of the career, I would I would have still been doing what I'm doing now at forty seven. But it's you know. It was smarter for me to go to 140. Of course. You know what I mean? And, I mean, you got to think about mm -hmm. the amount of fighters that do that so they could become multiple division champions. Not only is it a smart move uh, from a career standpoint or a physical standpoint. Shit, a financial standpoint. Exactly, because now, now, it's like, now you're the bigger man in a smaller division. It's easier to get a belt, in theory, because you still got to win it, but it's supposedly easier to get a belt because now you're bigger. Now, when you get to a welterweight, you already a one division champ. Your pay is different. Yeah. Who you are is different. It's just different. You moving up to a bag, a big yeah. bag. You know? yeah. And so, that's the money division, truth yeah. be told. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you going to get your feet wet <clears throat> below that. So by the time you get there, you already where you need to be. Plus, being 24, all those welterweights will probably be gone by the time you get there. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's how I got into that camp with Castano. Because... Castano was there, because uh, remember Castano that fight got postponed. Yeah. Because they was supposed to fight during that same time, mm -hmm. that same time period where I was sparring with Virgil and stuff. So Castano was there. So during that camp, right before we was leaving out, they was like, "Do you want to come back and help Castano get ready for his fight?" Manny said that. They asked. They, they asked. They was no, like, no. But I'm saying Robles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, uh, uh, Manny, and then um, Castano's dad. I think. I think that's his dad. Uh, he was like, man, we think you you'll be a good um, partner for him. You know what I mean? Because I, I box and move and stuff. So how did like you make that decision? Because you just finished saying that, that Virgil, you realize, ended up being a big boy. Now you're gonna spar a 60 pounder that's not gonna 54. be 60. You're right. 54. That's not gonna be six. 54, 54 at the time of sparring. Yeah. So like, how'd you make that decision? Man. <laughs> I'm a soldier, man. Yeah, At the end of the day, that. like I've been sparring bigger kids. I've been, he was I've paying been, good, champ. Yeah, yeah, he paid me too, so he paid me good. So, uh, man, at the end of the day, I I took that opportunity. Like, I'm like, man, I'm about to get some more experience sparring with Castano. Another, he the, he was the champ. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about to, I'm about to, he he asking me to help him out, get ready for his fight to to, to defend his belts. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm, man. Whenever y'all need, I'm back. So I came back like probably like two weeks later mm. to to help him with his camp. You know what I'm saying? It went great. You know what I mean? Um, How long were you uh, in camp with him? I think I did like a month. Damn. Yeah. With Castaño. Yeah. So I sparred him that. So I, I got gotta him. ask because you made it seem like Virgil might be the hardest puncher you've been in there with. So you don't compare Virgil to Castaño? Is Virgil a bigger puncher than Castaño? Um, cause like I'm I'm hearing you Castano, not have no, cause, stories Castano, about no, Castano. No, Castano explosive. I watched him spar. I mean, I, I watched him spar in the camp where I was in with Terrell. 
You know what I'm saying? I watch, yeah, I, I watch Castano's part of that count. I'm like, man, this dude pressure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a chance to watch him live. Like, okay, this dude, he, you know what I'm saying? He come to fight. So, um, first day I spar Castano, in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, I got to really be on my P's and Q's and keep my hands up and, you know what I'm saying? But I was able to just, you know, I was, my plan was just his boxing move. My whole, I was not going to bang with him. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but he, just like Virgil, he came right at me. You know what I'm saying? Explosive. And he he got a he got an unpredictable style too, so it's like you really got to be on your p's and q's because you he he hit you with something that you would that you won't even see how he even was able to throw that punch. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you really gotta you know what I'm saying be smart and be on your p's and q's and you know what I'm saying it was times where I had it. Sometimes I just grab him just to break his rhythm. You know what I mean? So it was uh it was it was a it was a big learning experience and um I learned a lot sparring him. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.